I would like to take you to Machiko and Kasama and introduce you to some of the artists that made these beautiful towns their home. If I was to name something I have always loved about Japan, it would be Japanese traditional design and craftsmanship. Long before I even dreamed I would live in Japan, I would pore over books about traditional Japanese architecture and the details in the woodwork. Now my sights are focused on antique Japanese ceramics and traditional ceramic techniques. Though I am not trying to reproduce any particular ceramic style in my own work, I can't help but be influenced by the beautiful pieces I come across. In my search for inspiration, I found the pottery towns of Mashiko and Kasama in Tochigi, north of Tokyo. The first potter in Mashiko was Keizaburo Otsuka in 1852. The pottery there still stands and is still maintained by the Otsuka family. Possibly the most famous potter to be based in Mashiko was Shoji Hamada, who established his kiln there in 1924. Once again, the Hamada kiln is also maintained today by the Hamada family. Many other important artists have lived and worked here, producing pottery with the same folk craft ideals. This enabled Mashiko to establish itself as the centre for the Japanese folk craft movement, or the Minge movement. The Minge movement has many connections with the arts and crafts movement and was the shift in Japan away from industrialization to appreciate handmade traditional crafts with naturalistic and utilitarian design. Though many of the large potteries have disappeared, Mashiko still maintains a large pottery industry. The town of Kasama nearby is also filled with potters and both have famous pottery markets where hundreds of artists sell their work. Mashiko and Kasama seem to be places where individual artistry is celebrated. It is no longer just a hub for folk craft style pottery, but a more diverse group of ceramic artistry. Many foreign potters have learned ceramics here and gone on to incorporate their experiences into their work. I think this history of diversity has made Mashiko and Kasama very open-minded and friendly places to be. Walking around, there is a great sense of pride within the community as people talk about their connections to each other and their work. I was told that the largest local clay business stopped processing clay as artists now order clays from elsewhere online. I hope Mashiko can maintain its traditions whilst moving forward. A few establishments, such as Starnet and Pejite, seem to be doing just this. 
places like this make me dream of a modern day Mingay movement. There is certainly an appreciation of this style within Japan right now. This was the cue to get into Pejite. Visiting the pottery market in Kasama was a different feeling from the bustle of the pottery market in Mashiko. Each artist had very individual presentations and every one presented beautifully. The setting within the Kasama Art Forest Park is idyllic, with sculptures placed amongst nature and lots of places to sit and relax. When you arrive in Tochigi, you will notice the architecture change. Not only is the area rich in clay, but it is also a big producer of Oya stone. This is a beautiful, light textured stone that is used to build some amazing structures. These buildings are quite striking and very different to the usual wooden framed houses you can find built around the rest of Japan. The Oya Stone Museum and Caves are amazing. It is fascinating to see how the processing used to be done when tools were more manual. These are some of the Hamada Shoji Museum buildings and you can see Oya stone has been used beautifully. The use of local, natural materials was really an important part of the Mingi philosophy. I hope these industries can survive in Japan as the quality and beauty is unmatched. I hope you get the chance to visit these beautiful towns one day and support the unique artists and businesses there. There is so much more to their history and charm than I have touched upon here and much more artistry to discover. <laughs>